G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And today, me and Aztec want to share with you guys a video about how the dingo has evolved in Australia to literally maintain the shape of our desert ecosystems. Stick around. Pretty dangerous. Aztec's forefathers arrived in Australia thousands of years ago. By the time Europeans had arrived, these guys had spread over to the entire continent of Australia, with the exception of Tasmania. It didn't take long, however, for dingoes and farmers to come into conflict, and in the 1880s, a 5,614-kilometre fence was erected to keep dingoes out of the southern part of the country, where they'd basically been eradicated. In the 140 years since that dingo fence was constructed, the two ecosystems on either side of the fence have actually changed and sort of created a perfect area for the University of New South Wales to do studies on just what impacts dingoes have on the environment. Because on one half of the fence, we've got a healthy population of dingoes. On the other half, they've pretty well disappeared. So in the last couple of years, universities have been studying the ecosystems along this fence. And what they've found, particularly in the Streslecki Desert, a pretty remote part of the northern part of South Australia and the, the southwestern part of New South Wales, that on the dingo side of the fence, on the northern side of the fence, fox and cat numbers are fairly low. On the southern side, fox and cat numbers are fairly high because they don't have the competition of a larger predator like this guy. Much in the same way that grey wolves compete with coyotes, coyotes compete with foxes, grizzly bears compete with black bears, lions compete with leopards. Big predators don't generally like little predators. So the next discovery was the increase in fox and cat numbers decimated these guys, the native hopping mice. Now for millions of years, these hopping mice have lived largely of grains, which essentially stops all these seeds germinating and becoming shrubs and trees themselves. So when the hopping mice disappeared, the amount of plant matter trees and shrubs and bushes skyrocketed. So all these extra shrubs that were present as a result of losing these guys literally changed the soil structure of the desert. All this extra root matter was holding the sand together in a way that hadn't been done previously. On top of this, all the extra shade that they created allowed things like mosses and lichens to grow in places that they didn't naturally occur beforehand. And all the extra plants changed the way that the wind flowed across the desert. And what they've discovered is that on the north side of the fence, the dunes are generally flatter, sort of the plains country that we expect to see out there. When you remove dingoes on the southern side of the fence, because these plants are altering wind flow and soil structure, the dunes are a lot higher. So basically what we've discovered is when you remove dingoes, dingoes go down, foxes and cats go up, hopping mice go down, vegetation goes up, sand dunes change, foliage changes, everything is connected. It's a perfect example of why we shouldn't take any animal for granted, whether it's the, the apex predator like this fella here, or the tiny little hopping mice that nobody thinks of. Every animal that we have in the country contributes to maintaining the ecosystem that we want to protect for our, our children and our great-grandchildren to be able to go out and see. They all have their own place. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit the red button down below. Leave us a like, a comment, all that sort of stuff. And uh, check on back next week for another wildlife video. As always, guys, have a good one and take care.